Greetings and welcome to a little bit of a Bits and Bobs video. A bit in the same vein as we have done um, a couple times in the recent past. Kind of a bit of an update on what is going on with me and the RS and everything car related. So, the first thing that we're going to look at today, the word update is quite relevant because I am going to do a sync and maps update on the RS. Alright then, what we need to do in order to update our sync is to get onto this website here, the Ford.co.uk website, onto this specific page. I'll throw a link into the description box below. So we can either scroll down or we can hit this getting started button, which will scroll down for us. Then what we need to do is we need to put in our VIN number in here. One of the easiest places to get the VIN number is on Sync itself. If you go into the settings of Sync, it shows you your VIN number. You can get it from other places as well, but that's a fairly easy way to go. Um, so grab that, and that's mine. So then just hit the check update button, and then it recognizes the car, and it bases what you need based on its records, um, which we then will update once we have finished the update ourselves. Um, so you can see then we get this prepare sync download option because we do have a software update available. So it's approximately 2.8 gigs. So we just go ahead and hit that big button and then accept and download software. And as you can see, it has started to download that big file. While that is downloading, it's gonna take several minutes. You can prepare your user USB stick. So I've got all, I've got one ready to go already. Um, so if we go to um, disk management on Windows, of course this is. If you're on Mac, then you'll want to go to disk utility. But the rough process is the same. You can see this is a removable disk I have here. I already have this ready to go. I did it earlier. Um, but just to show you, this is formatted to the XFAT file system. Um, this is the file system that it has to be in order in order to work with your car. With a lot of other drives um, in Windows, in particular, they're they could quite well be NTFS. USB drives quite often are formatted in FAT, um, but you need it to be this XFAT. So um, if you plug it in and go in here and it's not XFAT, which it probably won't be if you've never done this before, what you'll want to do is right click, go to format, and in this drop down choose XFAT, and just leave everything else as it is, and then just hit OK, and that will format it to the correct file system. So once it's done that, and it has finished the format, and the download has finished, you'll get a file like this, which is a compressed zip file. So what you want to do is you want to extract the contents of this into the top level of your USB drive like this. So you'll want to have three items here. You're going to have the folder called Sync My Ride, and then these two other files. Um, so if I go back to the file that is downloaded, um, in Windows, you can just double click and you can then drag and drop into your USB device. Other options, you could use a third party software tool like 7-Zip. Um, you can open the archive up and then do the same thing. Or you can use one of the context menu options like extract. But whatever your preferred method is, you just need to extract those three items from the zip file into the top level here of your USB device. And once it has copied over, then you can go ahead and close that and you can safely eject the USB device. At this point then we're ready to take that out of our computer and go back out to the car. All right then, we are in the car. We have our USB stick. So Ford say to fire up the engine, which I would imagine they tell you to do that so that during the update process, the car does not run out of battery life, which is fair enough because it can take up to 25 minutes, they say, to do the update. So I guess if you ran out of battery life in the middle of that, it would probably brick your sync system, which you obviously do not want. So we have the engine fired up. Sync is starting up. Yes, thank you, very nice. I'll just give it a chance just to do its little startup operations and whatnot. Just what it normally does, I guess. All right, so at this point, we're just, I'll bounce back into general. So about sync. So I guess this is kind of like a before. So this is the, bit that we're looking at, software version 2.2 of Sync 3, build 16.223 underscore product. If we then insert our USB drive, all right, so you'll see up in the top of the screen here, I've just got this message, updating system software. So I guess I just have to wait for it to complete the update. Like I was saying, Ford do say that this can take up to 25 minutes, so could be here for some time. But what I believe will happen, whenever it's finished, it will give like a 
a, a message to say that the software update is complete um, but the changes won't take effect until we do a full like power cycle of the sync system which will require us to turn everything off get out of the car um, lock it, wait for two minutes, make sure that it's fully shut down and then we can come back in and fire it all up again and that should be the update fully complete. So you see there the message that pops up once it is finished its installation process. So I went away, I had to do a couple of other things there and I just came back and fired everything up again and you can see now I have this little icon in the top right, this little downward pointing arrow. I think we should be able to tap that Ah uh, yes, sync successfully updated, sync received a software update which, oh, okay. <laughs> so we should be able to go in here now and about sync and yes you can see now we are sync software version 3.0 build 19205 underscore product. So there we go, that is a nice update done. So now what we can do is we can grab our USB, we can go back to the computer and there should be a little log file then that we can upload onto the website. And once we do that, that will update the records on Ford. And once we do that, that, will, that should enable us to get further updates in the future. All right, then we're back on my computer and I have plugged in the USB drive and I'm back on this page that we were at before. So now we have a button. I have successfully installed the software. So we hit that and now we get this option browse for log file. So I hit that and then I navigate to the sync my ride folder in our USB drive. We should have a file. It's an XML document. Starts with the word sync, select that, hit open and there we go update complete you have successfully completed your sync software update etc etc very good so there we go that's the process for updating the sync software utilizing a usb drive and the website um, probably better than trying to use wi-fi it might be difficult to get wi-fi signal in your car so let's see i go back to the start so check for update again so as you can see now it has updated Ford's records and you can see that our software is up to date but now it has unlocked this second option um, for maps so your map software needs updating approximately 25.5 gigs so another quite a large update um, so we'll just go through the exact same process hit prepare maps accept and download and yeah as you can see it's literally the exact same process except this is a map file so have to wait for that to download and then put it onto our USB drive that USB drive is probably a bit too small I'll grab a external hard drive So just put in the external hard drive with the maps and it comes up with this different thing that says about including new map data and stuff which is cool so just hit next um, your vehicle must remain on do you want to proceed yes alrighty so we are updating system software once again with our new map data now this is likely to take a fair little bit of time given how big the map data was but you can see as it's updating my setup here is I've got my external hard drive just kind of like sandwiched in between the two cup holder things so that it doesn't like fall over so I could probably do this whilst I was driving if I needed to go somewhere if I didn't have time to just sit here and do nothing and then my cable then into the USB port in here all right then we got the message that said to turn the car off and like leave it alone for a while and then come back and turn it back on so that's what I did I just went and had some food and whenever I turn it back on we now have our system is updated icon so we can hit that successfully received hit details for fun so sync was updated that's nice if I go back to settings go down to about sync yes we can now see navigation maps version F9 so that has been nice and successful so there we go now that we are running the updated maps and of course the updated sync software. There is another update that can be achieved. You can go all the way up to 3.4 version of sync. Version 3.4 introduces a completely upgraded 
like look and feel to the user interface. It's kind of like blue and there's a whole bunch of extra features. So I may look into doing that next, but I'm gonna leave that for a future video. What we've done there is like the official Ford way of updating things. So that is all good and successful. All right, then the next thing that we're gonna look at today then is a new sponsorship slash ambassadorship. So I have become an ambassador for White Line. Now White Line is an Australian company who make all kinds of suspension and handling upgrades, including for the Focus RS. And I have actually just received my first package from them. So I haven't opened it yet. It's this black package right here. I'll just flip you around. I haven't opened it yet because I thought it'd be fun to do it for you guys so we can all share in that experience together. So I'm probably gonna have to set the camera down. I'm gonna get this unpackaged, see what's inside, and that will act as a bit of a preview for some future videos. So you can see white line suspension and chassis products. Very nice. Nice packaging and it says the part number, sway bar vehicle kit, F and R sway bar and links. So let's get this open and have a wee look. So this looks like the front sway bar with a bunch of stickers, if you can see there. So that's cool. Ooh, we have Oh, ah, look. So I'll flip that round. So this is the anti-roll link kit. This, I believe, is for the front. Another nice white line sticker. Very nice. Ah, they just look absolutely lovely. Adjustable and just a lot more chunky than stock. All right, and then this will be the rear anti-roll bar. Nice. And finally, the anti roll link kit, exactly the same as those, except shorter, of course. And uh, I see another cool sticker in there. So it says White Line boasts a worldwide reputation as a leading manufacturer of replacement, enhancement, and performance suspension components that deliver significant gains in vehicle balance, steering precision, grip levels, and outright driving performance. Now that we've got it out of the outer packaging, we can get a closer look. We can see that it's lovely powder coated in this sort of grey colour. Um, nicely packaged, as I was saying. Uh, yeah, both matching, obviously, and the front and rear links are matching as well. So we can see there's your part number and you can see just they're absolutely just so nice looking everything included that you need washers and all that kind of stuff and yeah like look at that ah yes fantastic so yeah I decided to get the links as well because um, I, you know if you look at the links that are on the car they're a wee bit sort of thin um, and these are of course a lot more chunky and if you're gonna go to the bother of changing your sway bars you might as well do the whole links package at the same time. So that is a cool set of installs that I'm looking forward to and hopefully you're looking forward to as well. All right, the last thing then, as you can see, I am jacked up and I've got some of the bits from the last garage update video, the rust converter cloth and my little metal brush thing. And that's because I have just got one little bit of rust removal and sorting out to do. And it is just in a bit of a bit awkward spot. Um, I could get a light here. All right. So yeah, just right there, close to that, close to where the downpipe um, connects to the exhaust. And there's just a couple of little bits there um, that I couldn't quite reach, just around here and on the other side then as well. Really not in bad condition this bit, um, so it's been a low priority for the past couple of weeks. Um, I do have the rest done. It's perhaps hard to see here at this angle on the, with this lighting, um, but I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I did have to switch over to the little pot of Hammerite and like brushing it on manually as opposed to spraying it on because the spray Hammerite just gets really badly clogged up, like really easy. And it just becomes a bit of a pain 
um, to try and unblock it, a very messy job. Um, so yeah, there's no point in really trying to show you this. I showed you that whole process the last time, the process is gonna be the exact same. Um, but yeah, that's what I am doing and that is the update for today. So there we go, that is it, that is the update video. I really hope you're looking forward to that new white line stuff. It looks absolutely fantastic quality. I cannot wait to get that on. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do like, share and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.